wanted him to share his testimony because a lot of you probably don't know his story. Some of you don't even know he's married. I keep getting this question. Is Ruslan married? How did he get saved? And so we're going to answer some misconceptions, some um, questions. I have a bunch of questions for him from Instagram. We'll take maybe some later from the chat if y'all behave yourself. And then he'll share, <laughs> he'll share his testimony as well and what he does on YouTube, kind of how he came up. But I want to start with, first of all, thanks for being on the podcast. Man, thank you for Welcome, having me. Welcome, man. And thanks yeah. for having me in your studio. Hello. Dude, I love this. We're in your studio. I really appreciate you having me. Most people don't know that we're actually friends. Correct. So we're not just. Correct. That's always a shocker for people. They're like, you know, you talk to Isaiah. Yeah. Yep. So on both sides, they're like, yep. you, talk to yep. you talk to Isaiah. Yep. So we're friends. We text. You're friends with also Pagani, mm -hmm. also Mike. Yeah. Mike's, also, Mike's my guy. Like, yeah. Mike's yeah. Like my so guy. you're friends with a bunch yeah. of the demon slayers. Yes. People Correct. don't know that you yeah. talk. You got, you've been on, you went on a trip with Mike to Israel. Yeah. Me and Mike mistaken. had a great time in Israel. So they're both, they're all in the chat. Yeah. And I think you've talked to Vlad a little bit as well. Yeah. We and, me and Vlad talk about, I tried to get some uh, help with some Russian English translation yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 So we all talk, we're all friends. Um, we, we differ on several things, which we can talk about tonight. Yeah. Nothing salvific, nothing salvation issues. We're, we're the same on all the major points of Orthodox Christianity, but I wanted to have you on, on the podcast. It's much overdue. I want you to share your story, your testimony, jump into, you know, something that happened to you as a child that was, yep. was pretty big that I think a lot of people watching have gone through. Yeah. Anytime we talk about these sensitive issues, we might think, well, everyone knows this or sure. no, very rarely do people go through what I went through, yeah. but I think there's tons of people tonight. We have a few thousand already on here that have, have, uh, can relate to what you've been through and how you overcame it. And then yeah. we'll talk about some of the nuances and other questions about like deliverance and tongues and sure. spiritual gifts. Yeah. We'll dive into that. I think you're pretty clear on where you stand, but for some reason people are like, like yeah. they don't, they don't know all these things clear. I've been talking about for years. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. And then at the end, we're going to talk about, are you sponsored by liquid death? But that's going to be, <laughs> at the end. that's going to be, I got to wait till the yeah, end. You got to wait till the end. I definitely want to ask you a couple questions and we'll go back and forth, but let's start with how you were raised your upbringing. You weren't raised, if I'm not mistaken, in the US. Yeah. So talk to us where you were raised and then kind of what led you to here and we'll, we'll kind of yeah. break it down as we go. Yeah. So I'm I'm from a little country called Azerbaijan Baku, oh, which is wow. in the Middle East. So if you're looking on a map, it's just north of Iran. Okay. Um, right off the Caspian Sea. So uh the closest I've ever been to there was when I was in Israel. I was a thousand miles from where I was born. So you haven't been back since you were no, no, wow. no. So what what basically happened is if you go down and you look up uh, the Armenian genocide, which is this is the month of the commemoration of the Armenian genocide, 1915, um, 1.5, 1.6 million Armenians were slaughtered. This was Perfect. the genocide uh, by the Ottoman um, Empire, modern day Turkey now, that was the inspiration for Hitler because he always thought Whoa. who and who 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 remembers the Armenians, right? Whoa. And so you have this really messy situation and Armenia has a rich Christian history. So it's, I mean, and you could, you could ask Mike about this. When we were in Jerusalem, we went to the, we were in the old city and the old city of Jerusalem, a quarter of it is Muslim, a quarter of it is Jewish, a quarter of it is Christian and a quarter of it is Armenian. Wow. And so Armenians till this day, we've been there for thousands of years. Um, really rich history of just Christianity. The, 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 the folklore is that the, um, apostle, um, Bartholomew went to Armenia and preached the gospel and converted and mass revival broke out. Okay. So Armenia didn't have a written language until uh, the Bible, they, they developed one to translate the Bible. Like that's, that's how wow. enriched it is. Yeah. And so first, uh, first Christian nation, yada, yada, yada. So we have this really rich Christian history, but we're surrounded around all these Muslim nations, specifically Turkey and Azerbaijan. And so during the Soviet Union, people could kind of come and go as they please. This is the Soviet Union, Russia, Soviet Union, yeah. communism. And so long story short, the Ottoman Empire caused the Armenian genocide. Then Soviet Union formed, stepped up. And now we had all these people living amongst each other. And as the tension kept brewing with the Soviet Union and the, and the, and the communism and all that kind of stuff, what basically happened was there was this mass mass issue of pogrom i'm giving you the summarized version no it's good the, it's good. the pogroms of baku if anybody googles it in the late 80s there's these pogroms of baku basically where are rz's we want all the armenians out because this is our land they don't belong here they're christians get them all Whoa. out so my dad is having to travel and moves to moscow which is like a, a day's way you know day's journey away and me and my mom stay back because i'm fair skin i don't look Arme armenian armenian look like ethnically arab uh, but we're not. And so anyway, my dad leaves the, and they, they're going back and forth to Moscow. Me stay in our in in um in Baku and uh we apply for refugee status because mm. we're from a different 
country and we can't be here anymore. So there was massive like violence in the streets, all kinds of crazy stuff. And so we stayed behind and basically what happened was me and my me and my mom were kind of handling all the affairs and then there was one time and this is going to sound so over the top, but there was one time where some Armenian sh soldiers run into our, our house. And uh, excuse me, Azerbaijanian soldiers, they're coming because they're like, we heard you guys are Armenians. All the Armenians are gone at this point, but they're still. And how old are you at this point? So I'm like five. Whoa. Yeah, I'm like four or five. And what happened, and I'm not trying to give you too, too, too much TMI, but this is just an interesting aspect of my story. Um, Armenians culturally don't get circumcised. Okay. Because we take Galatians seriously, right? We take it like very literally. The West, everybody gets circumcised. We don't yeah. get circumcised. For whatever reason, as a kid, I had some sort of urinary tract infection or something. Okay. And I had to get circumcised at like four or five. Wow. The Arzis are Muslims. Muslims, like Jews, get circumcised. So when they ran into our house looking for Armenians, how my mom no proved way. to them that we weren't Armenians is she showed them my penis, which wow. was circumcised, and was like, no, we're, we're, we're not Armenians. Because, and again, we're fair-skinned. And so that time they left and and then like momentarily we went to moscow and then from moscow we moved to america in 1991 my mom and my dad kind of reconciled long story short my dad we come to america and how old are you when you came to america six so this okay. is may of 91 so I'm, i'll be 30 um, i'm 38 now i'll be 39 this year so okay. it's may of 91 um i was born in 91 so okay my mom speaks a little bit of english uh she took like like british english so her accent's kind of funky no one else speaks english and we're just do do we're just trying to figure it out in the process my mom and my dad are trying to reconcile, fresh start, coming to America, the whole bit. Well, she writes her ex-boyfriend. They both had side pieces back yeah, home, right? Yeah, yeah. Because again, he's working in Moscow. She's in Baku, thousands of miles away. Long story short, she writes these letters and I discover them and they have these kissy marks on them. Oh. And I take them to my dad and I think they're from my dad. No. So I bring them to my dad and I go, look what mommy wrote you. And that for him was the straw that broke the cam the camel's back, and he leaves, and uh, brings his his my now my stepmom to America. Okay, so they start a new new family. I now am raised um, single family, a single parent home in San Diego in the '90s, peak of gangster rap. Mm. Th three white Armenian family uh, kids in the whole complex and a whole area, all black and brown neighborhood. I get immersed in hip hop gangs. I get arrested at age eleven. Um, like my my life just just is completely spirals. And, my and where's your dad at the time when this so happened? Dude, my dad's like seven minutes away. Wow. And do you have a relationship with him? No, because wow. my mom manipulated the situation. I didn't find this out until I confronted yeah. him about this as an adult. Like, yo, where, where were you? Like, this is like fifteen years ago. I like had the conversation with him, and he's just like he told me the story. Like, you don't remember when you brought these letters to me, and you you don't remember like me getting into a fist fight with your mom's boyfriend and her telling me that like. I'm not, you know, don't come around here anymore. And every time I'd come around, there'd be drama and there was issues and fist, you know what I mean? And I'm like, it all started coming back to so me. So for years you thought it was your dad, but really it was- It was I way more complicated yeah. than that, man. And That's so rough. Uh, me and my dad are in a great spot. Me and my mom are in a great spot. But when all this happened, we, the community hub in America was the Armenian church. Remember, Armenians are super duper Christian, right? Mm. Culturally Christian, right? So this is Armenian apostolic church. goes all the way back to- Bartholomew in Armenia, planting that church thousands of years ago. Um, and I'm an altar boy. I get I get christened. I'm an altar boy. Explain what that is, because I heard I heard some of this and I'm wondering what are the viewpoint of that specific like denomination be yeah. considered? Yeah. Like what are what is the teachings? What would it differ from like a non-denominational yeah. probably or a yeah. church you go to now? So so because obviously we don't have altar boys now. Yeah. Just so for it's, context. it's so it's the first church that deviated from the Catholic Church, okay. right? So you had the the schism of four four hundred and sixty, and then you had the the Great Schism of ten uh, ten fifty, and then the Reformation, which is us Protestants. Yeah. We come out of the Reformation. Uh, so just think Eastern Orthodox. Think um, beautiful cathedral buildings. Yep. Uh, the only way I could parallel it is like it, it's very Catholic, okay. but it's not Catholic. It's, okay. it, it, it deviated from the Catholic Church 1,500 years ago. But they have incense. They have um, a lot hymns, of rituals and lot stuff. Of, a lot of rituals, a um, lot of paintings, a lot of art, a lot of stained glass. And it was... Definitely, you know, they're trying to stimulate all the senses. So it's music. It's it's that the speaking is in English and Armenian. It was it's very interesting to say the least. Theologically, it's very much so like a if you're Armenian, you are Christian. If you're Christian, you are Armenian, mm. right? So there's less of an emphasis on like personal born again experience yeah. encounter it's like with Catholics. Jesus. Like if you're Catholics. Hispanic, you're Catholic. Kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. And so 
I end up becoming an altar boy because that's just what we did. This is a community hub. And what's this the is, job of like an altar boy? Like what would you do? Uh, so I would hold these like, it's like little uh, things okay. that we'd hold. I'd have the whole robe on, the, oh, whole, wow. the whole spiel. And uh, sometimes I would organize the communion stuff, which, which by the way, the communion, the communion in Armenian church was bomb. Like it was, it was great. It was like it was, real communion. Dude, it was really good. And it was the wine and they was letting us sip on some wine. And as was, a little kid. As a little kid. And so uh, we had these incense that we would like, is it was a whole immersive experience. It was really interesting. But there's these older boys in the same altar boy role. So I'm probably like seven or eight at this point. And they're like 13, 14. Okay. All in the same neighborhood, all on the same block. Cause now so we were the first family that came out. Now there's like 20 families that come out, right? They just slowly come out as refugees to America. And so these kids end up uh like showing me gay porn and i was the mm. youngest one and then like full-on like molesting me and like penetrating me, like the whole bit whoa yeah I, so how old are you so i'm dude i'm no older than like eight. Oh my yeah what which the trippy part is you probably meet my son later my my son is the age i was when this oh happened you know what i mean and you yeah. just and you look at an eight-year-old and you go bro they're so innocent in the sense of like they have That's no old, concept how old my daughter is my yeah, oldest like eight. they have no concept of any of this so stuff sad. Oh, and so this sick. this this happened repeatedly and the and this led to this happening uh with other boys in the neighborhood and it was spun on me to make me the villain mm. like i was i was and i remember someone came up to me and asked me from the church if i was gay i'm eight years old that's so crazy and they came up to me and asked me if i was gay you know and i'm just like what does that even mean the word gay in russian sounds like the word blue like 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 a like like royal blue like light blue royal blue okay a galu boy is the word and i was like what and then they told me like oh yeah this happened and we heard that you were doing this and letting these boys do this too and i'm like huh that's so wild this sets me down a course of just complete rebellion against god because at the same time and dad's not around at this time dad's not really around he hears he catches wind of this he's kind of like did this happen what's going on and i remember there's this big confrontation and all the armenian families that were like a part of this were together and i remember getting up and screaming and yelling and saying like no like i didn't initiate this like i didn't even know what was going on oh, man, sad. and uh they they end up um you know so it's like this big like community affair at the same time the the church remarries my dad and my mom felt a way about that like mm. oh how could they remarry your dad da, 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 da. we technically weren't it just he just made it this whole thing so i'm like eight nine years old bro and i'm like there's no god like if there was a God, he wow. wouldn't have allowed it. Cause I, the, the shame is what I felt at the time. I didn't understand the dam, like the yeah. psychological damage. Like I just felt so much shame and so much confusion as a kid. And I was like, if there's a God, he doesn't love me. And, 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 and I, and I don't want to have anything to do with this God. So I remember nine, 10, 11 years old, wow. I am an atheist. And it really hit the fan for me when I discovered gangster rap. And we started trying to have our own like gang and, and uh, breaking into houses. I got arrested at age 11. I lost my virginity to a girl uh, multiple girls, 10, 11 years old, wow. you know, um, bro. And it's just downward spiral, like just complete downward spiral, got arrested. I remember my mom had to come pick me up from the, the San Diego police station. And this, the, the saving grace and all of it was the two older kids that got arrested with me. They had like real, uh, POs. And for me, it was like, just do 30 hours of probation and like, we'll leave you alone. Yeah. I did my, uh, not, not probation, but community service, excuse me. The community service I did with at a church mm. because my 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 um, our our apartment manager her name is Cherie and Cherie was moving weight and me and her son were best friends but she was moving weight and she got caught going through an airport with a bunch of cocaine. Cherie goes to jail, right? She goes to jail. She gets saved in jail. She comes out and the whole complex gets converted. Gets Come born again. on. Straight except, revival. Except the Armenian family and except me. Mm. Everyone's talking about Jesus. Everyone said, I remember going and watching a fight and like Mike Tyson versus Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield's coming out to Fred Hammond. I'm hearing about gospel music, Fred Hammond. And I have to do my community service at this black Baptist church. Mm. And so that was like my first exposure to the gospel was this clearly born again woman who had drive-bys happen at her house, who had all kinds of crazy wow. stuff happen. And she's a 100% different person. She's just a different person. She's not cussing. She's not smoking. She's not drinking. And I'm seeing this, but it still wasn't enough. I was like, nah, this is, this is, this is all, y'all religious. This is fake. God doesn't love me. And so it all culminated to me basically almost getting stabbed in this neighborhood because I broke into another house. After I already got arrested and did the, all, the, all the stuff, I, I end up 
getting arrested. Uh, I end up continue breaking into houses. I end up uh, this this family basically sends these kids to to like try to beat me up. At the same time, this kid got caught with a gun at school. Tried to say I gave him the gun. And then said I snitched on him and tried to pull up the Samoan kid, tried to stab me, and I had to run like down uh, El Cajon Boulevard. And my mom saw all this and moved us out to Vista, which is where we are now. So okay. I'm like in San, like in the heart of San Diego, and we come out here, fresh start. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm done with the smoking, I'm done with the drinking, I'm done with the party, and I'm 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 I'm, I'm chilling, like I'm good. And I'm gonna be a basketball player, like that was my plan A. I'm gonna go to the NBA. <laughs> You know, and me and you are about the same height. Yeah, yeah. And there's no Armenians that have ever made Six it to the NBA. Day. Yeah, yeah. There's no Armenians that have ever made it to the NBA. Like, not at all. You were going to be the first. I was going to be the first. And I played basketball. And in the process of playing basketball, I was still rapping and doing shows. And I remember me this girl. I, I won this talent contest at Bringle Terrace Park, which is not too far from where we are now. And this, and I met this girl, and she was like super clingy and super like into me. And at this point, like, I'm not really like messing with girls i'm a freshman yeah. i'm not really messing with girls like that because i'm so traumatized from everything like i'm just kind of like head on a swivel you know what i mean yeah and she was like hey if you want to hang out with me on a sunday like you got to go to church my mom and my family will take you to church and i was like sure like i'll go to church yeah i grew up in church yeah so i'm like all right whatever i go to church and all along the seeds being planted i'm meeting people that are telling me about jesus and i go to church and i end up going to church for two years straight from the end of my freshman year wow. every almost every sunday and um, I'm dating a Jehovah's Witness girl. When I break up with her, I'm dating a Jehovah's Witness girl. I'm I'm just trying to figure out. I'm reading books. I'm reading the reasoning for Scripture from mm. the Jehovah's Witness books. I'm reading uh, the Quran because it's Muslim girls I was talking to. I'm just trying to figure it out, dude. Yeah, and a little bit of everything. Yeah, man. And long story short, she um, she ends up uh, sharing the gospel with me, but she was still a mess. Like she was, she was a train wreck. And we basically flip flop, bro. Like I went, I became the Christian guy. Wow. Over 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 two year process, I I end up going to church every Sunday, raising my hand every Sunday, saying the sinner's prayer every single Sunday. Like I'm getting saved every week. Every week. And when me and her finally broke up, I basically caught her with another dude that she was cheating on me with. Ooh. And that's how strong that like manipulation was. Yeah. Like she really had me thinking that like. No, we're all no, 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 no. Yeah. And I and I pulled up on her one day after she had gotten beat up, and it's a whole another conversation. She was small, so she had to you know pull up on her. And the dude that she was cheating on me with is there, and so I'm like, and you're saved, Ruslan. Now I'm like kind of going to church. Yeah, you like at really, any moment. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know when I'm saved. Like I don't know exactly when I was saved, but I remember my buddy takes him to the side and I take her to the side. I'm like, what is he doing here? And he's like, oh, she, he was just in the neighborhood. And I was like, yeah, right. And then my buddy walks back up with him and the dude was like, yo, bro. And my, my buddy was like, yo, he has something he wants to say to you. And I was like, what's up? And the dude was like, yo, bro, I've been, I've been effing your girl. Wow. I didn't know she was your girl. And, and I was like, okay, like this is it. This is, I'm done. Like, yeah. I get in a car, I drive home. I have like this breakdown moment. And I'm like, Lord, like I'm done. I'm done trying to do it my way. I'm done trying to have one foot in, one foot out. I'm done still messing with this girl and still fornicating. And I was like, dude, I'm done. Gave my life to like fully surrendered. That was probably the moment I surrendered, yeah. you know? Get in, got into his men's group every Tuesday night, uh, started reading my Bible, like really, really, because at this point it's just apologetics. It's kind of more like head knowledge. Mm -hmm. but I had that. And then I would say a couple years after that, bro, I was around this family that I knew from San Diego, same neighborhood in San Diego. They moved okay. out here. And the lady was a hairdresser and she would throw these concerts. And so we were friendly and her sons did music. And I remember one time I went over there and I don't really share this story a lot because it gets weird and people get weird about this stuff. But I remember going over there and my buddy was with me and he was like, uh, and, and, and we were starting talking about the gifts of the spirit. And she was like, hey, uh, do you want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? And I was like, well, what, what does that even mean? And you've been in church for a few years in this yeah, point. And how old not, are you? 17. Okay, okay. Seven, no, this is like, I'm like 17, 18. Okay. It's like senior year. Okay. Yeah, something like that. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. But okay. And so we get up. She starts doing this this prayer thing. It's after a study in the Bible and worshiping, right? Okay. And it's just like five of us. Like nothing, nothing crazy. You're just okay. sitting there talking because we're all doing Christian music together, right? And so she's like, okay. And so... She just starts praying for me, bro. And she lays hands on me. And, and, and I don't remember if she tried to do it on my buddy first or did it on me. But 
As she's praying for me, my buddy, who's her son, walks up behind me with a pillow. Yeah, you're like, what's going on? And I'm here? like, what are we doing? Like, what is this? Like, would you like, what do you think? Okay, like, we go, you yeah. go throw the, the yeah, like the, I'm gonna fall, then I'm gonna fall. Have out. you seen any of that before? Never seen. Like, any have of you it. seen slain? I've the heard about it. I've heard okay, about okay, it. So you have, never you seen have any some of it. type of like, okay, this. Yeah, be. I don't know what this is. Yeah, but w- y'all talking about tongues and all this yeah. stuff, right? You're like, let's see, bro. So I'm standing there, and I don't remember again. I don't remember if she did it to my friend first or me first. But my friend, nothing happened. He just stood there. His dad was a pastor. Nothing happened. He just stood there. Dude, she touched me. And something, I can't describe it theologically. The Holy Ghost. Something happened, and my body went limp, and I and I and I and I like fell out, and it and it was just this overwhelming. Uh, it wasn't a, a shock of lightning, or yeah, however the people yeah. describe it. And then all she did was she said she put her hands on she put her hand on my mouth, and she said, "Speak, child." Mm. And I spoke in tongues. Wow. And 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 it was after that moment, like it was like something flipped. Yeah. It, 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 and again, I don't talk about this stuff a lot. It wasn't, it was like, um, I'd start getting like words of knowledge. Yeah. I'd start getting like little insight on things and I'd see things There's happening. There's a sharpness. Yeah. Elevated. And, 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 and I would occasionally, you know, speak in tongues after that, but I was still, I wasn't going to like a charismatic church. Uh, I was just going to like a seeker friendly, yeah. you know, easy believism type of church. And we started this ministry. So I'm now going into my senior year. All this is kind of happening in the same window. We start this ministry. Bible study, Thursday nights, open mic, DJ, pizza from Pizza Hut because I yep. worked at Pizza Hut. And bro, 70 kids start showing up, 80 kids start showing mm. up, 90 kids showing up. And these are not Christian kids. And we're just preaching, doing Bible study and having like an open mic freestyle thing at the end. And kids are saved, uh, getting saved. Drug dealers are there, like folks that aren't, you know what I mean? Like we just, wow. we do this thing. This is kind of around the time. like a revival going on there. Yeah, it's kind of around the time my mom, um, excuse me, the around the time my, my, I meet my wife. She's coming to this thing. A lot of people from this area kind of went to this. We call it the vessel of hip hop. Okay. And we were having it at New Venture Church. Long story short, she, uh, the, the pastor finds out we're doing this. And the pastor's like, this isn't a part of our ministry. <laughs> Heard that before. This, this isn't a part <laughs> of our vision. Like, yeah, we've been there. Bro, he's like, this isn't a part of our mission, the vision of our church. This isn't what we were about. No. And we had to shut it down after no, six months. No, pastors, why are you doing this out here? With no notice. Man, but, but, but that's check heartbreaking. Out, but check out God. At that time, my buddy, my mentor at the time, because I'm getting mentored and discipled by all kinds of different people. And these guys were called, uh, it's a group, Christian rap group called Future Shock. So they're like early 30s. I'm 18, 19. I got great mentors around me. He's working for UPS or FedEx at the time or something. He's delivering packages and he delivers a package. So we're, I'm going to regular church, but I'm also doing a Bible study every Sunday in his backyard, and he's helping me with the Thursday night ministry. Mm. It's like a group of them. I'm still and are friends you with these sharing guys. preaching, teaching? Or are you just involved? A little bit more, like testimonial. because yeah. okay. he could teach. So okay. I knew, like, I could teach and you if could I get have to. And bring people. I could bring people together, and he could teach. And so I was trying to get as many adults to teach because I'm like, I don't yeah. really know what I'm doing. I yeah. can share my testimony, and. He is delivering a package and he ends up at this church called The Movement. He had this vision to start a church called The Movement, but he delivers a package to a church in San Marcos called The Movement. The same week they shut down our ministry, him and the lead pastor were praying about transferring the ministry there without mm. even telling me. So we, not only did we not skip a week, we literally transitioned to a whole new church, open arms, and just transplanted the ministry a city over. And uh, and I got plugged into that church. That's the same church I've been at for twenty years. Wow, I've been at the same years. church. And this church That's is awesome. They came out of Oceanside Grace Church. They planted the Movement Church. Um, so you're seeing punk rock guys. You're yeah. seeing Harold Bradison. I don't know if you know who that mm-hmm. is. OG in the charismatic uh, circles with uh, the, the the Jesus Revolution. That that whole yeah. movement. Stephen Maddox. Guys that were close to Lonnie Frisbee. Yeah. Guys that were close to Greg Laurie. All those dudes that ended up in San Diego. All all at this church called the movement and okay. and it dude it's just it just exploding and so we started doing a ministry there it went from 80 90 sometimes 100 150 200 started throwing concerts at the church i told you we did like a, a metal show that yeah. i was kind of loosely affiliated with and uh yeah man in a couple you know at the same time i'm meeting my wife um we get married in 2008 um a ton of issues i'm still working through some of this trauma some of these some of these some of this addiction and we were dude we're a holy spirit filled church if yeah. you pull up to a so right now you guys are you're a charismatic you're at a Bro, charismatic church you pull up there's flags yeah oh you guys are that's really my barometer on how charismatic yeah, you yeah, want to yeah, be yeah, that's pretty there's flags every yeah. sunday there's flags and, I, and the lady that does and flags, you guys are praying for the sick the whole bit casting out demons come up front if you need yeah. prayer yeah every sunday there's people coming up they're getting prayer um so the, the the funny like the perception that people have of me is like the cessationalist yeah because I kept getting guy. the question on Instagram which yeah. we'll talk about is like is he charismatic does he believe in spiritual yeah. gifts yeah. why why do you think that is 
Now, when you go back to you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you're speaking in tongues. Were you sharing that experience with people? Were you going around telling people? I just told people something happened. Like I didn't yeah. really, again, I didn't have words. You for didn't it. have the desire to be like, what was this? Yeah. Or like, I want to pray for people to get this yeah. too. Or... Yeah, it was like we would pray for people. Okay. And, and, and there would be times where. So you guys are laying hands on people. There praying. was times where one time in particular, I remember a gentleman from across the street pulled up and said he was hearing voices. And this is at our ministry. Okay. And I and like praying and laying hands and cast attempting to cast out demons. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if anything really came out. Yeah, I don't yeah, know what you happened. Tried. You tried. We tried. You know, so we would see these these sorts of things and we'd see these manifestations on Sundays. Um, and it wasn't like every Sunday, yeah. but that these things were definitely happening. And so we would um yeah, I mean, till this day we we pray for deliverance. There's prophetic, there's there's like every like all the gifts are exhibited at our yeah. church. Um and I don't know why people have this perception. I think yeah. it's because they, they know me for like loving the scriptures. Yeah. So they so they assume, oh, Ruslan has a high view of the scriptures. Therefore, he, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. no, 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 I don't think it's a binary. I think it's and both. And I, in my church, it's and both. We yeah. love the word of God. We preach from the word of God, word, verse by verse from the word of God. Um, we went through the book of Genesis, verse by verse for like a year. We went through Exodus, oh. the book, you know, um, Ezekiel, the whole, like we went, the Song of Solomon, the whole, we went books by the Acts multiple times, covered the book of Acts. Yeah. So we loved the 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 scriptures, but we also loved the move of God. We yeah. would do a Sunday night kind of revival service every Sunday night. Um and so man, it was it, it's always been both for me. It's never been one or the other. And as you're traveling too doing Christian hip hop, which we'll go into as well, you're probably at a lot of like revival churches, churches that are praying. I mean, because yep. you hit some of these churches that you think are gonna be dead and they're super radical. They're yep. they're preaching. If you need prayer, because yep. I've traveled to these churches, you think, oh, this church is gonna be dry, and you yep. go and it's usually the ones I think are gonna be dry are the ones on fire, and yep. the ones I think that are gonna be on fire are just dry. Yeah. But I'm sure you were in a lot of these moments where you had these services doing Christian hip hop, yep. right? That you yep. got into yep. and then seeing the move of God in prayer and, and people yep. laying hands. It, bro, it was interesting. It was interesting because Christian rap went through a massive reform phase. I'm not sure how much if you know any of this, but like when this is probably right right, right around the time you get saved when Lecrae and those guys were blowing up. Yep. John Piper, oh, yeah, they Mark Driscoll, yep. all those guys. So Christian hip hop goes through this reform phase. But the reformed churches outside of Piper's church and maybe like Driscoll's church, a couple other churches, they weren't really booking the rappers. Mm -mm. It was the charismatic churches that oh, were booking yeah, the yeah, rappers. For sure. So we would, we would um and and even in the when I was going through a reformed phase, like Mark Driscoll is charismatic. Mark Driscoll yeah. believes in casting out demons. Yeah. Mark Driscoll yep. does deliverance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like so, it wasn't this like dry Calvinism that some people will kind of like have a character in their head. We were still believing in the gifts of the Spirit and praying and doing all these things, but we would end up at a lot of like really charismatic churches, Pentecostal churches. You yeah. know, and and it would it was it was wild. And so I did that man from 2008 to 2013. I go work at my church for two years. That was great. Two years, literally doing everything we're doing now. I wouldn't be doing this if I did not go work at my church. Wow. And I worked at my church, ran their media department, ran their live learned streams. Learned a lot of stuff. Learned about video so switchers. So that's how you learn everything. I always wonder. I didn't know what I a video wonder, switcher was. How do people was. learn? Because it takes, it's a high curve to get yeah. where we're at, yes. where we know about cameras and switchers yeah. and all. I mean, it's like, it takes a special yeah. type of person. Yeah. So I always wonder when I see a guy like you and you're working all the stuff, I'm like, okay, how did he learn this? But you learned yeah. it out of church. I learned it because we, fin <laughs> this is going to sound crazy. I was working with adults with developmental disabilities, right? And, and again, the way I was brought up, man, I just didn't have a high view of money, of diligence, of, of financial wisdom, restraint. Like, I'm poor. I'm poor, poor. Yeah. Like, welfare, yeah. poor, government aid, poor. I didn't understand any of this stuff. So I'm just kind of like, I love Jesus, but that's really it. And I end up working with adults with develop, develop, developmental disabilities after college. I'm trying to get the music going. And there's an opportunity presented to go do the video announcements at my church. Mm. I know Final Cut and I know how to handle a camera. And so I started doing the video announcements. Then they're like, okay, cool. You do the video announcements. We want you to chop down and upload the sermons and put them on the app and put them on YouTube. I'm like, cool, but we got to do multi-cameras because it just looks static. I got this one shot. This is trash. Let's do multi-cameras. So I started doing multi-cameras and I got tired of having to chop up in Final Cut the, the entire sermon. Yeah. So I said, there got to be a simpler way to do this. Yeah. And someone was like, get a video switcher. So I convinced my church to get a video switcher. And that's, you know, what we're cutting now and doing. Which now is common. Back then it wasn't that common. It wasn't. So they you got a video switcher and they, and they allowed me to just run that department at the same time I'm on the teaching team. So I'm teaching maybe five to eight times a year. Okay. You know, Sunday morning, like they let me. Oh, wow. So you're actually yeah. like on the, in the pulpit. In the pulpit, okay. right? I probably wasn't very good, but like I was competent. Yeah. You know, but, and we also did our sermon prep together. So we would like walk through our sermons and what are the talk, the stories and the talk and the Bible and the parable, all these things. So we walked through this whole process and 
I do that for two years and God just kind of opened up a door to transition into doing music full time. So I did that 2015, which is very hard on my marriage, like 2015 Christian rap independently, mm -hmm. like no reach records, no, no Lecrae, no one's helping out. We're just going for it. Show to show, traveling. Yeah. And, and it, it, the, the beautiful part was that me and my wife had gotten out of debt at this point. So that was the on-ramp for our marriage to get stable. That was the on-ramp for me to confess my porn addiction. Mm -hmm. That was the on-ramp for me to get like just financially diligent, but that impacted everything. It yeah. impacted my mental, my physical, everything. And so after the music full-time 2015, we ended up doing some stuff. Um, one of my artists did a deal with a major label. So we're like in the same studio, they recorded Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly, working mm. with the same producer, right? Like in these same circles. And that just, I just, it just wasn't a good fit. It wasn't a good for, fit for me. Cause I'm at the same time, I'm like, music is great, but this has to be a neat means to an end. Like yeah, we gotta tell yeah. people about Jesus. Like I don't care to just be like rubbing shoulders with like all these cool rappers who are in the mainstream just because, you know, yeah. like we gotta, they, this has to be driving to some sort. And so we ended up cutting out, uh, I, we ended up drifting, done with the Interscope Records thing, done with all that, a real messy situation in terms of relationships. And so I'm just kind of struggling, man, 27, 2018. I ended up taking this class at my church called Men's Skills, which was a combination of like group, Bible study, mm. group therapy, psychology, and like intensive prayer. Wow. 13 weeks put together by Jeff Frankie from North Coast Calvary, who is a licensed psychologist, okay. um, loves Jesus. And that finally, decades later, like lifted the shackles mm. of some of this, like this lid that was on my life. Now you were like, were you battling, you know, we watch porn for a few months, you get free, yep. you're not watching, yep. you're just in that cycle. Yep. So many, and so many people, there's what, 3,000 people, yeah, 2,500 on here right now and then yep. plus Facebook. So many people are in this cycle of cannot get free from the sexual yep. bondage. Yep. For you, I mean, it sounds like it came upon you not by choice, but by what happened to you. Because yeah. once yeah. you get into anything sexual, it opens the floodgates, Dude, especially it, as a young and that's person. that's what happened. It opened the floodgates and I did the deliverance ministry, come up, get prayer. Yeah like uh, wanting the to elders, get free from it repeatedly multiple yeah. times yeah. and 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 I, and I view it like this i feel like in god's providence and this is not i'm not a calvinist so i'm not trying to sound super yeah, yeah. god's will was all for all this but somehow in all of it it there was some some breakthrough at times but it, it just it was all of it. it i needed the prayer yeah i needed the the i needed to get to the root of it yeah because i didn't quite fully understand the root and and the shame and the father wounds and the mother wounds and so like once I finally got to the root of it and I got the support, then the then the switch became, and this is gonna sound crazy for some people, but the switch really, the unlock really was when I got physically healthy. Mm. When I stopped. Let's see the chat. When Preach. I when I stopped staying up late every night, working on music until two in the morning, three in the morning, when I stopped eating donuts all the time, when mm. I stopped doing these things, and I finally said, I, I got to go to bed at the same time my wife yes. goes to bed. Say that again for those I, in the chat. I, I, I have to confess and have a support system, but I need to take care of my body. I need to have a way to channel this energy yeah. that is not um, self-destructive. Yeah. That's not trying to uh, medicate with food or medicate with dopamine through music and trying to have clout on the internet. Like yeah. I have to have a, a other ways. And once I unlock that and every, Isaiah, I tell you, everything changed mm. like it was like the the floodgates came off and like in a matter of years everything exploded yeah cuz i've been i've been i've been making music yeah. i've been making music my first, i started making money for traveling and doing shows i'm not talking churches i'm talking college secular college shows in 2008 mm. we we did a smiths college in massachusetts an all girls secular school we were getting paid to do that in 2008 as christians by the wow. way unapologetically christian in 2008 so we were making money back then but Something about that, everything just realigned in the past five, four years, just everything's clicked. Wow. My marriage is better than it's ever been. My finances are better than it's yeah. ever been. YouTube exploded. Yeah. Music is the biggest it's ever been. Like it's it's been such a crazy just unlock. And it just in God's providence, it all worked out. I yeah. don't I can't point to, to the moment to the moment, but just everything changed. And so uh 
I'm, I'm just in a great spot now. I like what you said about how you, I go for a deliverance prayer. I'm at the altar. I'm surrendering to God. It wasn't just one moment, but it was a mix of going for deliverance, going for prayer, getting people laying hands on me, plus changing the diet, plus going to bed on time. Because yep. I see guys, they come for deliverance, which is great. And they get delivered from whatever it is. Some manifest, maybe they don't, yep. but they're like, I felt that spirit of lust leave me. But then they're still up super late at night. Yep. They're still not eating. They're still not sleeping, whatever it could be. Yep. And then they go right back to that same thing. And they say, we heard someone say this today and the a question on the Patreon mm -hmm. was, well, I need to get more deliverance. And I'm like, not always. Yeah. Maybe you open the door again, but mm -hmm. it's not that every time you do that, a demon comes in, you yeah. need to start disciplining. Jesus said, yeah. like, gouge out your eye. Right. So I tell people, is your laptop worth more than like your eye or yeah. cutting off your hand? So I think there's a lot of people watching that they get stuck in the same trap. At some point, it's like, oh, I see the trap. The trap is me being up at midnight. The trap is me being super tired. A lot of guys, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, they get they start watching porn or get involved in sexual when they're super tired, they're yep. exhausted, yep. they get off of work, yep. their wife's asleep, they're, they're decompressing, whatever you yep. want to call it, yep. and they go, I can't get out of this. Yep. And I know you're passionate about seeing guys get their health together, yeah. get their marriage together. You talk about this all the time on your channel, get their family together, get in church. You're big, you're big uh, spokesperson for a local church. Absolutely. Some people might not hear that or have that idea. They might see your viral videos of like, you won't believe what Joe Rogan said or whatever. Sure. But if they look at the meat of your content, I've watched your stuff. I yeah. see a lot of times where you're like, you need to get involved in the local church. You need to get your marriage together. Yeah. You need to get off the laptop. You need to start eating yeah. right. And these are like things that the Bible teaches us to do. If you look at Proverbs right. over and over, you see what, idle hands do, what laziness does, what a bad diet does, yep. what a man that can't manage his finances. Yeah. So I think we have a, a big contrast of like super, super spiritual, which is good. We need the spiritual. Absolutely. Yeah. But also there's people that I'm like, dude, you honestly need to get disciplined. Yep. Like you have no discipline in your life yep. and you keep going off to those things. So is there, is there, um, am I on the right track with yeah, some of the yeah, stuff yeah, you're yeah, teaching cause, and you think? Cause, for, Cause I don't think it's a binary. I think it's yeah. and both. Like I think the spirit, the spiritual regeneration the born again experience yeah. should impact our physical and the physical has an impact on our spiritual yeah. right so i think initially what happened to me there was probably some sort of demonic component i don't yeah. understand how as a 13 14 year old you penetrate an eight yeah, year old yeah, and like so and there's not crazy. something demonic about that that's yeah. really 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 dark yeah and then i think over time i don't know if it happened at salvation i don't know if it happened when i got the holy spirit i don't know if it happened one of those times i went up for prayer and like i don't want this anymore lord take this from me but something happened and then it was the okay you know, uh, Dr. Michael Brown always says you can't crucify a demon, a demon cast can't flesh. cast out the flesh. Yeah. I had to figure out a way to crucify my flesh. Yep. And I had to figure out a way to handle the things in the natural to say, okay, what's going on in the natural? And it was like, once I started figuring out those keystone habits, and for me, it was really like waking up earlier, yeah. taking care of my body, all of these different things. And then my, it was, it was really interesting. I'm not trying to get explicit, but it was, <laughs> I say once the finances got stable, once I got healthy, all of a sudden my wife, who was a virgin, yeah. and I'm, I don't know, I don't mean to get too explicit, but when you marry a virgin, it takes a while to get a, 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 a rhythm to your sex life. Yeah. Right? And so, which wasn't, because I'm thinking, I'm going to get married. And yeah. I'm, oh, I'm done with porn. Yeah, that's what guys right? think. Nope. Nope. That's not how it is, nope. guys. Nope. And so, I... It was hard because I'm married. I had all these expectations and it and it, and, it, and it didn't play out that way. And so it took years just for it to stop hurting. Mm. Long story short, after I fi we're financially stable, she's she's not worried about money. She can stay at home. We have money in the bank. I'm fit. I, I'm not overweight anymore. Yeah. She approaches me and goes, hey, I think we should have a, a calendar. Wow. And I was like, a what? Yeah, <laughs> like I'm down. And she's like, a calendar. And I'm like, okay. You know, and so like as coming from that sort of tr now I have safeguards, Yeah, you know, and and I, and, and I have to be disciplined and go to sleep on time. Yeah. Right. Because I, I learned that my willpower depletes. Like you said, yep. the more tired you are, the harder it's going to be to say no to sin, say yep. no to temptation, say no to the flesh. Um, And so, yeah. And, and so it was just such a it's just such a weird thing the way it all clicked, yeah. you know, but I saw that I, in hindsight, I see the hand of God all over it. Yeah. Now talk about a little bit. So you come out all this, you were in ministry for two years. Were you just like, this is not for me or how did, how did you end up transitioning out of the ministry and feel like I don't want to be in? Cause I think a lot of guys I see guys like you guys like me, we have this, like, obviously if they were here in your studio, we have this super obsessive personality. We're yeah. like, we're go hard on anything we do. We're super passionate. We're all in. 
I found for me, like just being at a church as like a pastor, I think a lot of guys get stuck in that role because it's the default, mm -hmm. but there's this other world where you can, like for me, I traveled and preached, but I also pastored yep. a church. Yep. But I was like, I, I always say, don't call me pastor. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be a conventional pastor. My personality is I want to create content. I want to preach. I want to travel. I want to share, but I don't want to just be stuck in the role of a pastor. I think a lot of guys, like they would take a guy like you and say, you just need to be a pastor. Right. So you do have some guys let me do an example, like a Mike Todd personality. Sure. In my mind, I'm like, you probably shouldn't be a pastor. Yeah, yeah. You should probably be a content creator. You should yes. probably be a guy on YouTube traveling, yes. preaching yes. an evangelist. That's how I feel. Because for me, I'm like, I have zero desire to pastor a church ever again. Yep. And if I do, and God calls me, praise the Lord. But for me, like I'm not a healthy pastor. Yep. I don't want to sit there for hours. I don't want to do all the things the pastor has to do. Yep. I want to do what God's called me to do. And do you think guys get stuck in that role of yeah. like, they're in ministry, but in reality, it's like, maybe you shouldn't be a pastor. Why do we all have to be yeah. pastors? Yeah. Well, you know? it's, 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 it's a removal of the fivefold. Yeah. Right. And not to get like super yeah, philosophical yeah, yeah. and theological about like our modern day apostles. Yeah, for today. Yeah. Like table that for a second. There's evangelists. Yep. <laughs> There's all kinds of things you see in the New Testament yeah. with 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 the with the expression of the gifts, and we've reduced that to You're just a senior pastor, pastor worship pastor, head pastor. And that's it. Which there's no name pastor in the Bible, which is crazy. Right. But it is in the Bible. It's just there's no one named yeah. pastor at all. And so yeah. I was like, man, I I turned 30 and I had my son and I had uh, some money saved and the things were starting to happen with music. And I, and I thought to myself, I can go back to ministry of 40. I can't go back to trying to be an yeah. entrepreneur yeah. at 40. Like my life is going to be what it was. And so we're touring, we're coming back from South by Southwest. Anybody that's in the music industry knows South by Southwest is a big deal. We did some showcases. So we're coming back from South by Southwest and we're in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And the guys went out and they got like ponchos and they were hanging out. And I remember being on the phone with my wife and I said, I could just sense at the church, like you can't do, you can't do both. Yeah, no, you can't do no. ministry I and build do a I'm business. I couldn't be at the church. There's no you way. You can't do it. And I remember sitting down, uh, calling my wife, and I said, "Hey, babe, um, it's getting weird at the church. I could, I could sense the tension because mm -hmm. you're not all, you're not there enough, and you're not, not there you're, enough. Just, Easter's I, coming up. Yep. It's just weird. And so I said, I think maybe we should start praying about putting in, in transitioning, like putting in our two week notice and transitioning. And my wife, who mind you is a stay at home mom mm. with a six month old, goes." I don't think there's anything we need to pray about. I think you need to come home and put in your two week notice. Wow. It's my wife telling wow. me this. My wife believed in me more than I did. God at the speaks time. through our wives, dude. dude. I find this out over and over. My gosh. So I come in, I, I come home, I put in my two week notice. My June 1st, 2015. It's still a vlog up. If you go research Ruslan, my days as a full time rapper, you'll see my very first day as a full time rapper. And Walking on the water, stepping out. First year, you know, rough. Second, and we're touring and it's hard and we're gone. And, but you know, four or five years later, it's amazing. It's it's an yeah. amazing journey. Now, how do you go from you're doing Christian rap, which is ministry, obviously, to now you're doing YouTube? You came on my radar. At, what was it? We connected what two years ago? It's been a while. Yeah, it must have been yeah. 2020 or something. 2020, yeah. Because you only when I saw your channel, I feel like I could be wrong. Maybe 20,000, 30,000 yeah. around that mark, yeah. which is still bit like I feel bad that we say oh it was only 20. For us, it's not huge, but yeah. like at the time that was massive. Sure. I remember when I cracked 10,000 in the end of 2020. I was like, dude, I have 10,000 subs. Yeah. You know, and and then growing now, things have exploded. How did you go from? Because I think a lot of people see you, they don't see like Russell on the rapper anymore. They mm -hmm. see you like creating content. I want to talk to you yeah. as well about like what your channel is about. Yeah. But now you're creating content. How did you go from that like rap to being like, I want to do YouTube? Because yeah. this is really new. Even though people think YouTube's been around a long time, like what me and you do, especially in the Christian world, is very new. Right. It's only been around for a few years. Right. Even like TikTok, people think TikTok's been around. It's been around yeah. for like a few years. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff we're doing is short content, yeah. reaction yeah. content, yeah. streams that we're doing. I'm trying all these different streams. I was telling you, I did the New Testament reading at all in one yeah. stream. Like all these things we're trying yeah. are still new things that no one's done before. Yeah. So how did you venture into that yeah. like and start off on YouTube? So I'm dabbling in YouTube in 2015. This is when Casey Neistat was hot. The yep. vlogs are hot. So I'm dabbling. I'm doing stuff. And I just, I couldn't find my my rhythm on YouTube. And I was, at the same time, I'm also running a whole label and there's artists that I'm working with and we're, we're you know, we're trying to figure it out. And so I kind of put it on the back burner, but I knew that there was something there with YouTube. Long story short, 2018, 2019, I remember 20, August 2018, I have 5,000 subscribers, August 2018. And I start, I got two cameras and I, and I figured out that I can use a video switcher 
with the cameras and go in through a cam link. And yeah, I was which like, is like back then game changing. <gasps> Yo, I could I, plug a camera into my computer. I could a plug one. a camera in and live stream and it looked good. So I said, okay, I'm going to start just bringing two cameras, one ring light overhead, and anywhere I travel to, and, and I do a show, I'm going to set up some stuff and do some interviews in a green room. Mm. So I'm just literally interviewing, say me and you were doing an event, I'd yeah. be like, Isaiah, let's sit down and talk for a while. I'd just set up two cameras, boom, boom. I'd control the video switcher, and we would just have a conversation. 2018? 2000, the end of 2018, all of 2019. Just before the podcast explosion in like yeah. 2020, 2021. Yeah, so I'm just flooding YouTube, probably, I would say a couple times a week at this point. So 2018, I'm 5,000 subscribers. End of 20, I go through all of 2019, just interviewing my friends. In the process, I'm also getting to interview non-Christians. Like you can go back and you could see me sharing the gospel with China Mac, mm. you know, who's a who's big on Vlad TV. I had Wendy Day on who did a lot of the the deals for massive secular artists. And I'm like getting to tell her about Jesus, right? Mm. Just because I just built these relationships in the music industry. So 2019, going to 2020, I'm at 15,000 subscribers. And I go, okay, well, the pandemic happens. Everything is locked down. And I go, I can't interview people anymore. Mm. Let me just react to stuff. And I just started doing these like reaction videos. But the but the real- Just giving Christian commentary to like Christian whatever commentary. is going Nick, on. Nick Cannon said that, you know, white people are bad. Okay, like let's, what does that, how's, yeah. what does that mean from the Christian person? But whatever was going crazy, I would just do a video on that. And I was doing it live because I'm like, I'm not going to edit it. I, I know myself, right? Yeah. Like let me just yeah. pump one, one take it, drop it, boom. And so I go, I do that and- it just started kind of picking up and there was the end of 2020. I had a couple of different moments on the channel. And so the end of 2020, I go from like 15,000 to like 45,000 subscribers. Okay. And then the AdSense starts popping You're off. Like, Whoa, I can make and I'm like, yo, this. I can make it. And it, re it quickly replaced my music income because I'm not doing shows anymore mm. at this point. So, I'll, so I'm like, okay, cool. And then the moment I could hire someone, I brought on Zach, who's, you met Zach earlier. He yep. was, he's been with me since he was 17. Wow. Shooting videos, music videos, all my old music videos, Zach shot those. So the moment I had that, before I could really even pay myself, I reinvested it and brought in Zach. Uh, and he was kind of part-time with me. And so we just kind of kept scaling the process, scaling the process. It was the, the, the idea of multi-upload, of doing just interesting topics. What are people talking about? How yeah. can I add a Christian perspective to this? It was also a lot of like watching what other creators were doing and yeah. seeing different different models that were working. But also I think just people, an event happens and everyone's at home because it's the yeah. pandemic. And and you're just like, I need to think through this. I want to prop like, I want to think through this. And who, oh, I wonder, I wonder what Isaiah Saldivar thinks about yeah. this. I wonder what Alan Parr thinks about this. I wonder, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, there was like a, a vacuum there. And so- and, and, and no one was really doing Christian reacts at the time. Not at really. I, I was, I didn't start doing them until like a year, not even a year ago. Yeah, not, not anyone yeah. that was on my radar. Yeah. I was watching Mike Winger. Yeah. And I remember at this time, Mike Winger had like- Does he do reaction 000. content? Not really. Okay. He, he might do something really, really, really current. Like I think he did the Ravi Zacharias thing. Okay, more in the Christian world yeah, stuff. Yeah, but not like mainstream stuff. And so like, I just- started doing it and then all of a sudden like John McRae reaches out Alan Parr reaches out Mike Winger reaches out you reach out people just started reaching out and I was like yo there's something here like there's a there's a community here like yeah. there's 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 something here and and just seeing the potential of how can we impact culture and by culture I don't mean the world yeah I mean build culture kingdom culture yeah so there could be a radical bottom up transformation yeah. right like if between all of us there's 10 million people watching just hypothetically right and these 10 million people get plugged into local churches mm. start loving their wives start leading their homes start getting financially disciplined and stop spending money frivolously and living paycheck to paycheck and going into debt start taking care of their bodies start contributing to their communities and if and if there's just if there's 10 million people over the next five years did that like really locked in and said i'm going to live my way god's way mm. i'm going to live my life god's way excuse me i'm going to live my life i think that would transform communities yeah. potentially the country potentially the world yeah you know and and I, and I was like yo this could really scale this could infinitely scale and we can and we can just serve as that like inspiration and hope with teaching and, and context and how do you think about this and discipleship and local churches and getting people plugged in so that was kind of that's that's kind of like the vision you and know? i like i like what you do as well because you you said would you consider yourself like mostly like an entertainment channel like what what would you consider your channel to be i know your goal is like contextualizing the gospel reaching people but one thing i like that you do is you bring on 
preachers or speakers or pastors. You're yeah. like, hey guys, let him tell you or teach. Like right. today we talked about deliverance. You're yes. like, honestly, I'm not super passionate about going back and forth about yeah. like whether a Christian could have a demon or not, yeah. but I'll bring you on to talk about yeah. it. So I think that's cool because you're platforming either other pastors and leaders that maybe don't have a big platform. And some, yeah. some of the guys I've seen you bring on have like 1,000 subs, right? Yeah. But you bring them on, teach the word. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you consider? Because I think some people and I'm being frank, I'm just being shooting straight with you. I don't yeah. want to be rude and overstep sure. here, but they come and be like, oh, Ruslan's lukewarm or Ruslan's complacent or this because they come to your channel thinking it's going to be like mine where I'm teaching the Bible verse sure. by verse sure. and they get like you reacting to whatever's happening in culture yeah. and then you giving like a Christian context. Yeah. Do you think that some of the misconception about you is that people are coming to your channel with a mindset that, I'm coming to see a Mike Winger who does yeah. like, you know, I think you say he did like six hours on women in ministry or whatever. Crazy serious. Yeah, so they're teaching like deep Bible stuff yeah. as opposed to removing the expectation and be like, hey, I'm coming, bringing you guys entertainment, bringing you guys the word yep. also, yep. but I'm not like a preaching channel. Like yeah. don't come for yeah. a preaching channel. Is yeah. that fair? Yeah. Or do yeah, you think that's totally some fair. of the confusion is there? We're in uncharted territory, Isaiah. Yeah. Like this is, all of this is new. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I'm just looking at it like, okay, like I'm not going to teach the Bible better than Mike Winger. I'm just not. Yeah. Nor do I want to. Yeah. Right? Like I rather bring on Mike Winger. Yeah. I rather pla I rather promote his channel, which I always do. I'm I'm not going to do better apologetics than some of the the OGs in that space, right? I'm, I'm that's shot Dr. Sean McDowell from Biola University, right? His dad's book is what led me to the to, to the okay. Lord. That's cool. Uh the new evidence that demands a verdict. Um Josh McDowell wrote it and then his son is an amazing. Like I'm not going to do apologetics better than that. I'm yeah. not I'm So my thing is, hey, one where is the space for just throwing on something in the background yeah. while you're vacuuming your house? Yeah, yeah. Where is where's that sort of content? Where it's conversational, it's some current events, it's some cultural stuff, it's processing through, hey man, what, what about all this ideology of the trans stuff? And like, I don't want to yeah. be a bigot, but like, I yeah. also don't want this stuff pushed on my kids. And like, yeah. I want to honor them with dignity, but I don't want, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. where's, where's the nuanced conversation? And there's nothing really, in my opinion, there's, there, there wasn't nothing really in the space of like a, anything Joe Rogan related or, or anything with any type of entertainment value. Yeah. It was just all hardcore ministry. And yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. That's I what think I it's would, great. Yeah. I think it's great what you do. I think it's great with uh, Pastor Mike Signorelli does. I think it's great what uh, Alan Parr does. He went to Dallas Theological Seminary. Yeah. There's so many great teachers and apologists and all that kind of stuff out there. That, but I'm looking to the person that's like, hey, man, like, I just. I, I need some something fun and just something I could just shut my brain off and just relax. Yeah. And then if I could sneak in some daily proverbs, if I could sneak in. And if you look at every almost every video, we go to a passage of scripture. And you're giving a Christian perspective. Exactly. It's not like you're giving like a, you're giving the Christian perspective on what's happening in culture. For me, because I'm busy, a lot of times I'm like, I could care less about what so-and-so said or what so-and-so said, but to hear a Christian perspective, right. kind of it's almost like a news sometimes where it's like, oh, it keeps me up to date on what's right. going on. Right. But I pop on your stream when I'm getting ready yep. for my stream. I was yep. telling you because you you're, you're earlier than me, yeah. but it's just hearing, okay, this is what's going on, kind of staying in tune with what's happening from a Christian perspective and like culture and stuff. I, I think that it's unfair that a lot of people are just so quick to be like, if it's not all Bible teaching, there can't be any variation. Right. Right. And then we write each other off. It's like, I'm a heretic because I believe a Christian could have a demon. You're a heretic because you're not preaching every stream. Right. It's like, are these really salvific or salvation issues? Right. And that's why even our friendship, we did, we would disagree on a few things. Like we talked earlier about some things which we could talk about again, um, whether it's like salvation, can you lose it or not? And even some maybe deliverance, but it's all like a lot of it's word semantics. It's yeah. not salvation issues at all. Right. So there's a lot of just throwing stones on YouTube. And I, yeah. in my opinion, like I come in your stream, I'm a member, I give, I donate, I just being in there, like, hey, bro, just to support, to show you, like, hey, dude, I'm supporting what you're doing. Because yeah. it feels lonely. Like, yeah, I don't know if you feel sure. this. It feels lonely. <laughs> like, I'm in, I know there's like, what, 3,000 people on here, but sometimes you're on here and you're just like, oh, man, it just kind of feels lonely being in the Christian space because right. you don't have a lot of support from other creators. Right. Um, and even though we have big channels, but I'm like, man, I just think there, there's, we need unity massively. There's such dumb little issues in the body of Christ, which we'll talk about that are dividing us and coming, that's like, why? Why yeah. is something so little? This is not a salvation issue. Yeah. If you're not, if you're convicted about it, and I, or if I'm convicted about it, I'm gonna let my convictions be my convictions, right. but I'm not gonna go out making a video. What yeah. is some of your take on the whole world of like Christian YouTube and the heresy hunting of, are you just kind of like, I yeah. mean, what are your thoughts on I it? I think some of it is valid. I think some of it is people trying to be good Bereans. Yeah. I think when we're talking about what I would say are like pretty important issues. Yeah. Jesus is God, yeah, the Trinity, course. right? Those sorts of things. I think those things are, are important. I think some of it is petty. Yeah. I think some I was of it say, is. Don't you see some of it and be like, this yeah. is so petty? I think some of it is, is is petty and unnecessary. And it's just like, okay, like, 
I saw some stuff recently on like Tim Mackey that was like really bad. That was like, whoa, like this is this is completely removed yeah. from any context. Yeah. And so I think there's a there's there is a market for it, right? Because I think people it gets, people love the drama. people want to be yeah. outraged. Yeah. Like you want to yeah. be outraged over something. And it's like we okay, if we know this guy is on this energy, do we need to make 20 more videos about yeah. this guy being yeah. on this? Mike, Mike Todd's Easter service. Yeah. I made a video and I basically said, Hey, we are now Mike Todd's street team. Mm -hmm. All you guys that have an issue with it, all you guys that are mad at it, have you ever thought that maybe Mike Todd wants you talking about it? Yeah. Because the more you talk about it, the more it pushes him up the algorithm. And so I said, Mike, Mike Todd's, you know, his, <laughs> I said, Mike Todd's relationship with Christian YouTubers is like Donald Trump's relationship with the liberal media. Yeah. Like it's a symbiotic relationship. They, they're both benefiting from each other. Yep. And I don't really know if I want to participate in that. I yeah. don't know if I want to keep being outraged every single thing he does. I'm kind of over it. I'm like, bro, if we worried about as much of what Paul did than Mike Todd, I just feel like every time I'm online, there's another thing Mike Todd. And I, for me, I've, I've drawn back a little bit from the videos of like this celebrity or Megan Fox said this about hell. Cause it's like, sometimes I'm just like, I literally just could care less. I'm busy. So if I miss it, I could care less. I'm not going to make a video, but I just, this year I'm like, man, I just want to make videos that I want to make that I feel God calling me to make that it make me about topics I want to talk about. Yeah. Like even we've been doing a lot of deliverance content because we have this movie that came out, come out in Jesus name. So we've been doing tons of deliverance videos i texted you guys yesterday i'm like man there's a bunch of other topics i want to get on guests i want to bring on um i want to make content that i feel god telling me to make as opposed to you having to jump on the trend of whatever sure. mike todd said yeah. sometimes i'm just like i honestly just don't care what so and so said about sure. so and so sure so i think it's it's easy to get caught up in some of that yeah and it and, it, and, it, and there's 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 clips for it there's clicks for it there's, there's yes there's, easy it's, views it's, it's sensational stuff and so it's like one of the things we talk about fairly regular is net positive videos what's a net like what's a how can we add a video that's not this is bad and this is wrong yep. but like how can we do a video where hey like this is interesting that this person said uh andrew schultz went to church yeah. and loved it and yeah. said that he felt the presence of god andrew schultz is not a christian but that's really awesome and it's awesome that he could talk about it in a positive way that's a net that we call that a net positive video, yeah. right? I'm not, I'm, we're not trying to take anybody down or anything like that. Yeah. And I think sometimes in the world of the internet, it's like you wake up to be outraged. You wake up to be mad about something. Yeah. And I'm just not that angry. I'm a pretty happy guy. My life's pretty amazing. God's yeah. good. So I, I don't want to keep rehashing the same thing. And there's a ton of channels that can do the Mike, Mike Todd's bad video. We have thousands of Mike Todd is bad video. Have you ever thought that maybe, uh, that's already established and we yeah. don't need to keep rehashing that, yeah. you know? Or, or have you ever thought that maybe he's just immature and needs to grow and maybe God is doing something in his life and over time he'll get there? Yeah. And in the meantime, we don't need to flip out every time he does something that looks sus. Which people are in the uh, Instagram like, oh, why is he promote Mike Todd? Which you've called him out like over and over and over again. You've had friends on and been like, this is what I disagree with him on. I had a member <laughs> of his church that was with him since day one on the yeah. channel and talked about, do you think I'm unfair to Mike Todd? Mm. What do you feel like is unfair? Let's talk about it. Yeah. What is your experience like? Oh, it's not all peaches. There's been some tension. Oh, but he is a good guy. You think you think he's a good guy? And we 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 had that conversation. And then he told me, I think you should pull up to transformation and try to talk to Mike Todd. And I was like, yeah. I might just do that. Yeah. Right. I'd rather talk to people than talk about people. Yeah. And I think that's that's what. It, and by the way, everyone I've ever made a video about, which in the grand scheme of things, if we're talking two thousand videos. I think there's maybe 50 about pastors, about celebrity pastors yeah. that are negative. A lot of them are also listening to what Francis Chan said. This is amazing. He yeah. said this great thing, right? So it's a it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting dichotomy. But I want to talk to people than at people. Yeah. And God's opening those doors, which is what we did today for three. Which hours. Which is what we did today for yeah. three hours, and yeah. we disagreed, and we disagreed passionately. But at the end of the day, I still believe your intentions are good, and yeah. you're doing your very best to to, to love Jesus and. People will say, "Oh, Isaiah is bad." They'll call you a wolf, and I'm yeah. like, "I don't, I don't think he's a wolf." Yeah, I think you guys have strong theological disagreements. Cool, let's move on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it was so easy to just be like, "This person's a heretic." When it's like, "I'm a heretic because I believe Christians could have demons," which a lot of other Orthodox people believe. It's just, it's trivial to me yeah. that you would go as far to say someone's a heretic or a wolf because they believe, like, for just an example, a Christian can be demonized, or even like that you can lose your salvation. There's a massive majority, of the, a large part of the church that believes that. Historically, a large part of the church has believed that. Absolutely. And there's a huge amount that don't believe right, that. Right. But again, that's not a salvation issue. Pre-trib and post-trib. Sure. I had so many people when I went from pre-trib to post-trib be like, I can't watch you anymore. It's like, dude, this is not even a salvation. This has no 
bearing on your yeah. everyday life or your salvation. Sure. So I think there's a lot of misconception. And then, like I was telling you earlier, I do the verse by verse, and I've never seen one heresy hunter talk about that. They don't even want to think that I would teach the Bible. Like yeah. Isaiah has the Bible on screen. It scares them. But I think there's just a lot of, what. Are, what is one, and I'm going to ask you some of these questions here, yeah. a couple of juicy questions if you don't mind me asking yeah. you. What is one misconception people have, like maybe from my community or some of the demon slayers, some of the charismatic guys yeah. on YouTube to your your guys' community that would be le like, what would you even consider? I wouldn't say you guys are charismatic, yeah. but just not just not where you're teaching on the gifts and sure. teaching all that. Sure. What would be one of the misconceptions maybe some of these communities have about you? That I am flippant with my lifestyle. Mm. That I just live any way I want to. Yeah. When the reality is, Isaiah, I don't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, like I go to the gym, I go do some traveling and I go to church. I'm with my family. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Yeah. I don't listen to secular music. I don't, right? Like I don't really, I like my life is really restrained, mm -hmm. like really disciplined and really restrained. So that, so when I pose a hypothetical question and go, hey, uh, is this as big of a deal as you're making it out to be? Do we always need to be the the, the communities online that are known by what we're against yeah. instead of what we're before? Should we kind of tone it down with some of this outrage porn? Yeah. Which is what it is. People yeah. wake up and they and there's a dopamine spike from being mad about uh, us versus them. They're the bad guys. Really. Instead of saying, hey, what if I live my life in a way that God would have me live? And then uh, First Thessalonians, your daily life may win the respect of outsiders. It was our daily life, right? Uh, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders. And so I think the misconception is that um, I'm out here just living any way I want to when the reality is I've been with my the same woman for 15 years. Mm. I've been at the same church for 20 years, right? Like my... Ask about any ask anyone in my local community about my reputation. Ask anyone in my local church about my reputation. Like, and so I think that's the part. There's there's no there's no asterisk next to my name. There's no mm. blemish on my reputation, right? I've been the same guy since high school. And I got day ones around since high school that are yeah. still close, that are still here. That I show you a, a brother sent me a, a video note today, somebody I led to Christ 20 years ago that is like, bro, you 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 confronted me in a courageous way and told me I needed to give my life to Jesus, and I'm good fruit. And, and you're the reason why. Wow. Like I get video messages, yeah. you know what I mean? And so it's like- Does it frustrate you then when you see online people say, I mean, no. they're always gonna talk. No, though. no, no. They're always frustrate. gonna talk. It doesn't no, frustrate no. you. No, no. I mean, it's the internet. Like what yeah. are we gonna do? Yeah, like yeah. like people are gonna say crazy things about yeah, you. all the time. And be, be, the thing isn't saying crazy. The thing is being uncharitable. Mm, that's, I think that's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, like if I'm believing the best about Isaiah, then I'm believing that even when I think Isaiah is wrong or, or, or we, or disagree, I think you're still coming from a great place and you still love Jesus yeah. and you love your family. I think that you about you. Show. Right. When we were talking earlier, I'm like, yeah, but I I would disagree, but I still am like, okay, you're honest. You're on the right track. You're preaching right. the word. You We agree on all the main doctrines. Right. Why is it so hard for us to come together and be like, we're friends. We're doing this thing together. Right. We disagree on certain areas, but it's right. fine because we still serve the same God. Right. I, don't, I, I don't think unity is conformity. I think we yeah. think... Christian unity is we're all the same exactly. Yes. But Paul's like, why is it that he's a different body part? Even when it comes to like deliverance or miracles, like there's guys that are, they, they feel like their ministry is to pray for the sick or to minister to the sick in body or to do like miracle ministry. Who am I to say, no, God doesn't want you to do that. You're focusing too much on healing. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of guys, even with like deliverance, like you're just focusing too much on it. It's like, who are you to tell me what God's telling me to do or yeah. what my function is in the body of Christ. Right. And so there's a lot of like, I don't need you. And I feel like, man, we all need each other. It only tonight, what we're doing with all these people watching and bringing unity, everyone's saying yes, unity in the chat is only bringing fruit. It's only yeah. helpful. Yeah. It only can help that we come and, together. And here's the deal. We're going to bring communities. We're going to go back to, to, to both of our communities. We're going to remain friends and talk all the time. Yeah. And there's going to be some people that are like, how dare you sit down with Ruslan? Yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah, and there's going to be people in my comments. Yeah. That are gonna be like, how dare you sit down with Isaiah? You're, yeah. you're tripping, bro. And it's like, at the end of the day, I rather move towards unity without compromising truth yeah. because you adhere to all of Christian orthodoxy. Yeah. You you affirm the Trinity. You affirm Jesus as God. You affirm the resurrection. Like yeah. you affirm the Bible is inspired word of God. So I think moving towards conversations because I think when there's clarity, there's confidence. If we have clarity and we go, okay, well, where where, where is the, the, the specific disagreement? Oh, Isaiah views the word demonized as this and that's the Greek and, and this is where the, okay, cool, now we know. Yeah. Now we know. And, and then we could talk about it more or we could not. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like you're saying, you're like, I don't really want to go on and on. I enjoy going back and <laughs> forth with people that don't agree with me. Yeah. But I'm like, it's, it's just interesting dialogue. Hey, let me ask you a couple of these sure. questions here. So we talked a little bit about this, but touch on this for all those watching. Sure. 
is your view on tongues. How do you view, you spoke in tongues, yep. you've, you've spoken in tongues, you had that experience. How do you view generally like speaking in tongues? You're at a charismatic church. Are they actively like speaking in tongues yeah. at your church? Yeah, people or? speak in tongues at my church. Okay. Uh, probably more so in, in a way that I'm probably less com comfortable with, if I'm honest with you. Okay. Meaning that I believe tongues is a gift. Yep. I believe tongues... Uh, I believe there's the languages of tongues when we see in Acts, but I also believe that you can pray in tongues okay. as in First, First Corinthians, First Corinthians 14, 14, yep. 14, right? There's a, there's clearly a distinction where he says praying in tongues and speaking in tongues. Yep. So I the the reform guys will be like, nope, there's just languages. And the charismatics are gonna be like, no, 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 no. It's, it's just praying in tongues. I think it's both. Yep. I think that it's a gift that you can get. I think not everyone will get the gift. Okay. And so I would take the position of a Dr. Michael Brown where he says, hey, potentially... Anyone can get it, but yep. not everyone will get it. Yeah. And so like I speak in tongues. My wife doesn't speak in tongues. Yeah. My wife is one of the most Holy Spirit people I know. I think when you start saying you must speak in tongues to be saved, I go, whoa, that's scary. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't believe that. Yeah. I don't believe you must speak in tongues yeah. to be saved. And, and then it is, the distinguish could be, okay, well. I think that's dangerous to should, say. Can anyone speak in tongues? I would, I would say, yeah, possibly. Yeah. I don't know. But I know a lot. And this is where we go experience theology, yeah. right? Some of the most anointed, Holy Spirit filled uh, amazing men of men and women of God I know have never spoken in tongues and they love Jesus, yeah. you know? And so I go, well, I think people can, but, but what about the other gifts, you know? And so, and then the only thing in terms of what tongues would be, I would say, when I see in the scriptures, I see an interpreter. So I, and it's, by the way, so this sometimes happens at my church. I don't feel comfortable when it's like, everyone pre preach in tongues, pray in yeah. tongues. And everyone just goes, Hasper. you know what I mean? Yeah. And at the same time, I go, uh, Where's the interpreter? Yeah. Where's the translator? Right, and so I would. That, that's me being charismatic. Which your church would disagree with you, obviously. My church would be saying that we we don't do everyone pray in tongues. We we would only do that in a time of prayer. Yeah, like so, an altar so call or prayer in meeting, a time of worship, but not like during a time of speaking. In a time of worship, preaching. in a time of hey, we're gonna pray. You will hear some people praying in tongues. You yeah. will hear some people silent. You will hear some people crying out to God, worshiping, pray, some people singing. That's how my church gets down. That part, I'm like, oh, it's a little too charismatic because if we're speaking in tongues, I'm expecting an interpreter. Yeah. And that's where I would say like, I'm charismatic with a seatbelt, right? I, I love the gift of tongues. I don't think we should uh, deter anyone from aspiring the spiritual gifts, the the the, the Holy Spirit gifts. But I just go, mm, that, that's the only place I would probably differ, on, which is, I, I believe Dr. Michael Brown's position. Yep. Yeah, I would say if you're in a time of prayer, you don't need an interpreter because you're not speaking a message. So like in 1 Corinthians 14, of course, I'm not, we're not here to try to debate theology here, but 1 Corinthians 14, where Paul's talking about order and church service, mm -hmm. he's like, don't get up and, and, and just, he's like, don't get up and preach in tongues when there's no one interpreting, which is what they were doing in Corinth. Yeah. But when he says you could pray in the spirit and he says, I, want, I wish all of you would, I want all of you to yeah. speak in tongues or pray in tongues. You can interpret it how you want. But I think that in that situation, I, would, I wouldn't be uncomfortable. In my mind, I'm just like, man, when I look at the state of the church, I don't go like, we need less tongues. Yeah. We need less miracles. We need, there's a lot of said, we don't need deliverance. You're talking about too much. In my mind, when I look at culture, what we just reacted to earlier, yeah. I'm like, dude, we need more deliverance. We need more, like works is not the issue in the church. Laziness is, there's not enough Christians like going after God, pursuing 1 Corinthians 14. And then people say, well, we shouldn't pursue. No, the Bible literally tells us to pursue. Like we should actively be pursuing spiritual gifts, not because I want to, or I'm into experience because literally the Bible tells us to. Yeah. So the, the, the cessationist would say, you shouldn't be pursuing miracles and spiritual gifts. But then I'm like, if we're true to scripture, actually you should be. Dr. Brown always says like, if he, if he debated John MacArthur, he says the debate would be over before it started. Cause I would be using the Bible. But his point is like, <laughs> if you're using the Bible, yeah. This guy has nothing to stand on when it comes to like the gifts ceasing, because mm -hmm. of course there's nowhere in the Bible that says yeah. that. But I just think, man, with the state that we're in, I think we massively, and I get it. You're, you know, you go like, I'm. In, do you think there's a world where Ruslan ever is like in full time ministry, or you're ever on the channel being like preaching or going like, we need to pursue yeah. gifts, let's pray? Yeah. Do you think there's a world where that is the way, or you just feel like right now the season you're in is not kind of where you're at? I think, or I'm, are you not even passionate to do that? Is that I'm, I mean, well, I, you're think, like, I think I'm naturally an evangelist, yeah. so I want to get people far from God in a church yeah, and, and into, into churches. And so I think let your daily life win the respect of outsiders. Like I think uh, you're saying, man, we, we, we need more of the power of God. And I say, yes, and we need more of the power of God in people's lives yeah. and like transformative. Whoa, who are you Yeah, a year ago? And who are you now? That looks utterly different. What happened? Like, yeah. I think, I think we need more of that. Um, and so I want to pour into a local church. I want to get people into local churches. Um, and so I think because I'm probably naturally more wired to think about like, okay, what is this going to seem like 
and, and I'm not saying Sunday morning church should be for non-Christians. Yeah. And I'm not saying we should coddle non-Christians. But I'm also, but I am saying if somebody w- stumbles into a church on a Sunday morning, is any of this being contextualized to them? Yeah. Are we just kind of yeah. swinging off the chandeliers with the flags and praying at times? And they're just kind of like, which by the way, again, you know jumping on, he goes to a charismatic church where they, yeah, flag. where we do flags. Yeah. 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 And so like, if I bring my mom to church, who's there's already a cultural barrier. She's, she's Russian. Okay. You know, her English is already, and I bring her to church and I sit her down and there's all this stuff happening. Like, is, is that fruitful to her? You know? Yeah. And, and my, by the way, my last time my mom was going to church, she was going to a very charismatic church. Okay. Like a super duper charismatic church where, where all of it was happening. And it, it just, for whatever reason, like it just, none of it clicked for her. And yeah. maybe maybe that's some of my bias too. Like maybe yeah. my bias is like, yeah. I think we need to consider people that are totally detached from any church culture and what are they going to experience when they walk into a building? I think there's a there's the, the presence of God, worship, all that stuff is super important. But when we start... Uh, when it just gets too charismaniac and yeah. too over the top, I think I think the 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 person who is far from God is just going to be like, "What is this?" Yeah, you know? I think that's why, like, for a church prayer meeting is when all that should be happening. It's like you're having yeah, a church yeah, prayer meeting because yeah. it's a believer. We would say like it's a believer service, so we do like a Wednesday night prayer. Like this yeah. is for believers. We're yeah. not here to cater to people yeah. that aren't believers. Yeah. Um, what about like so in your everyday life? Is and, and by, by the way, if I saw someone do that, like I saw a good friend of mine do that recently. They were in the middle of preaching a sermon. And they started speaking in tongues. Yeah, I don't discard that person and say, "Yeah, oh, they're they're a heretic." Yeah, I just go, "Huh, yeah, probably wouldn't do that." I disagree yeah. with them. I'm, I wouldn't even. I'm not even going to bring it up. I'm just telling you this for the sake of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Which do that. I think any preacher friend I have too. There's times where I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'd say that. Yeah. I don't know if I'd do it right. that way. Right. So in your so you're charismatic. You believe, and I know it sounds like we have to say this elementary, but there's a lot of people that maybe don't know you that are on the stream, and we're kind of like bridging the gap here. Yeah. Um, in your everyday life, are you like? Are you open, like Lord? If you have a word of knowledge for me, if you want me to lay hands on the sick, if there's somebody in my life demonized, I would connect them or I'd pray for them. Like, is that in your wheelhouse of like pursuing spiritual gifts, or do you feel like you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. is there is there an openness in your personal life to be like, man, I want to see the power of God move? You're at a charismatic church, yep. or is it something yep. where you're like, man, I'm home a lot. I'm just kind of doing my ministry. Yeah, yet. well, when I'm looking for opportunities all the time, yeah, you know, and, and, and I'm looking for opportunities because I'm a creature of habit. I'm looking for opportunities with the person at the grocery store when I'm yeah, checking out with yeah. the person that I'm interacting with. And then a lot of times, yeah, like if I know someone's not in the local church, I'm like, yo, you need, you need to come to church. Like yeah. you need to get plugged in. You need to do you need to do these things that can help you get the breakthrough. Now, in terms of like if somebody is needing deliverance, I am not around a ton of people yeah. like that. I have seen people come forward and, and get deliverance and things yeah. break through and I've seen healings and I've seen miraculous things happen. Um, and so I would love to see the power of God. I think... And I would love to see the power of God transition into the day-to-day life of the disciple. Yeah. So I think it's like, that because I think sometimes, and maybe I'm thinking of it in a binary, sometimes I think it's just either or. It's like, we need the Holy Spirit power, but if there's no Holy Spirit power without repentance and transformation, absolutely, long-standing fruit, right? Which, by the way, all the revivals that have happened there, they all have long-standing fruits, yes. decades and, and generations removed. Yep. And, I, and, I, and I'm into seeing that, which I think it's an and both. I think the Holy Spirit moves, and then the byproduct is the fruit of the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Love, kindness, peace, joy, self-control. Like I was I was talking about earlier, because I think some guys will hide behind like I believe in it. Not that you do at all. I don't yep. definitely don't want to accuse you of this because I know you're being open, like I believe in this. I'm totally yep. down. Yep. And I would feel comfortable praying for someone in front of you and you not be like, This is yep. weird, you're yep. any of that. But I think there's a lot of guys that will say, like you say, you're charismatic with a seatbelt. And yeah. I've heard guys, not you, yeah. say that. And yeah. I'm like, I joked about it earlier, but I said, you don't need a seatbelt when you're like in a parking lot. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of guys hide behind, like I'm charismatic. I yeah. believe in some of the heresy yes. hunter guys, they all say, we all believe in deliverance. And in my mind, it's like, well, then show me or yeah. prove it. Yeah. Or, yeah. or we here, all believe here, here, in here. miracles. Ask Pastor Mike Signorelli what it was like spending 10 days with me in Jerusalem yeah. and some of the things we got to do and some of the people yeah, we got to for m- sure. pray for and minister yeah. to. Because I think Ask there's guys that. that will say that and yeah. I'm like, what I want to show our audience is like, man, you are going after this stuff because a lot of people are like, I have a seatbelt and I'm like, yeah, but you're in park. Like when your kids are eating, <laughs> when your kids are eating McDonald's in the parking lot, you don't need a seatbelt. Yeah. So why do you have a seatbelt yeah, on? Yeah. Like take the seatbelt off. Yeah. But it's it really, there's a lot of guys that are charismatic in word, but they don't actually believe it. Like yeah. they've never, like you said, like I actually believe this stuff. So anyways, that was an interesting thought because I've heard, maybe they stole from you did you was that an original thing the charismatic with a seatbelt charismatic with a seatbelt i first heard of it from driscoll okay i heard of it from driscoll i don't know who i heard say it but i was like bro the person that said it, i'm like yeah. you're in the parking lot well, you're not I, charismatic with i mean again like if you if you go back and you look at what was the flow of things back then like driscoll was the only reformed charismatic yeah you know 10 years ago like he was the only one talking about 
I'm seeing visions of demons over this woman yeah. and and God told me that her husband's abusing her and I called him out and you know what I mean like there was yeah. so that's where I heard the, the the phrase from and by the way what is seatbelt I just mean the seatbelt is the word of God yeah like, I want the word of God to guide how I'm moving and not me yeah, you don't to, want to be reckless yeah and not try to guide God and tell God what to do yeah yeah so that's yeah. what I mean by that it's good. I like it. Okay. So we talked about spirit. Someone said, what's your thoughts on spiritual gifts? We already talked about that. Someone said, what is your thoughts on deliverance? So you obviously had me on today. We talked three hours about deliverance. Yeah. When you see, and just being honest and, and talking, yeah. when you see deliverance happening, when you see there's kind of a movement going, you know, some of us are leading it, the movie's out, we're doing deliverance. I've, you've had me on to talk about deliverance on your channel, yeah. right? And we've talked about like the orthodox view of Jesus coming, casting out demons. Obviously I have a bunch of deliverance content. Mike Signorelli, who you're good friends with, yeah. Pagani, who you're good friends with. You've had both of them on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, what are your thoughts generally? We don't have to go super deep and go an hour on it. No, we've been going an hour and a half already on deliverance ministry and like the casting out of demons. Yeah. I think if someone is in a place where there's the sense of uh, this is other other bodily, yeah, this yeah. is otherworldly, I would say go up and get prayer. Yeah. I would say go up and get prayer. Ask for prayer. Ask, for, as James says, have the elders lay hands on you and pray for you. In terms of deliverance ministries, I haven't seen the movie, if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, no, you don't, don't have to give it to I, I don't. I don't, I think like when I, when I see what Pastor Mike is doing and I understand him on a personal level, I go, man, if people are coming up and, and they're getting prayer every yeah. Sunday. Which is what deliverance is. Yes and amen. Yeah. You know, I think where I kind of said is like how much of this is cosplay, how much of this is people coming up over and over again. And yeah. it's, like a sh it's like a show for them. They want to be in on the show. I don't know people's motives like that. You yeah. Know? But I do think that some of it can be sensationalized yeah. to the point where it becomes a show not not all the time and so and that's where i go i, I just i don't know I, yeah. I, I don't know i've seen it yeah i've experienced it i've seen pe i've seen people healed i've seen people you know radical things happen um in in terms of like the like a deliverance ministry i i'm honestly not that immersed to have ever been to one of your guys' events in yeah, person yeah. you know i have and deliverance ministry is not even biblical cuz we always say it's like jesus's ministry sure. the idea of like you just do deliverance yeah. as the ministry is is not a biblical reality but i i know we talked back and forth about you saying like some because they didn't hear obviously but some of the people are they coming you ask me like yeah. are they coming over and over again is yeah. it like are they and i told you like i would say 1 to 2% maybe are coming in it yeah. for them it's a show for them it's like yeah. but a lot of genuine people are the ones that are needing deliverance, mm -hmm. are getting deliverance. Mm -hmm. And so I think that could be and, to and a I, lack of exposure to sure. it. You haven't been and, exposed to and it. And I would say if somebody wants the, if someone has that experience, it didn't unlock something for them. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. I, why, why would I be mad about that? Yeah. You know? that's, that's the thing I always think. Like, why are you mad? The guys out here are mad about it. It's like, why yeah. are you mad about something yeah. Jesus did? Like, yeah. this is what he does and we right. love him. Right. So why would we not want to see this for right. people or right. see deliverance right. for and, people? And, I'm, and by the way, I'm not beyond going up for prayer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've I got, said that earlier like, as well. There's, like, so if someone needs deliverance and they feel like they need someone to lay hands on him and pray for him, yes and amen. Yeah. You know? Now again, I, that's that's not an endorsement of everything that happens yeah, in yeah, the yeah, service. I don't know everything that happens. I don't know all the, all the particulars. I don't know how it all flows um we pray for people at our church we yeah. offer people to come up get prayer get hands laid on them every sunday yeah i heard a guy recently say a similar thing he's like man it's so, so he's like i want i believe it he said jesus and i'm actually going to be doing a podcast with him or a podcast because we have disagreements on stuff but he said i believe it i see jesus doing it i know it's real but it seems so sensational yep. and i just told him i said go look at all the scriptures where jesus cast their demons and look at the response of the demons one boy foamed at the mouth and felt like he was dead if you look at like acts chapter 8 the demons were screaming. So people were literally screaming as the demons left them. So a lot of times it looks like theatrical and I'm I'm probably the one of the least theatrical guys, not not of my friends, but of like the general deliverance sure. ministry. I do a lot of stuff in private. I'm not very theatrical. I kind of just like come out in Jesus name type of thing. But if you see some of the theatrics, some of it, I'm like, that's too much. Yeah. Other theatrics, I say, that's actually not theatrical. That's just how demons leave. Yeah. Demons throw Have a tantrum, seen, they're mad and they scream out. you some of this stuff like that you see happen in like parts of Nigeria or parts of Ghana? Like there's a clip that's like you know a demon came and did something in my mouth and you know and he's like telling her to cough out the semen and like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no no i don't get down with none of that okay. yeah i know what you're talking about yeah, yeah i've seen some so of that. that's the part like i don't I, see, it's me, hard to see it on the yeah, internet see, and to, like what is real to me, what is i would not, be like that is that is that's not that's not that's not it how, how do you how do you draw the line on that well the fruit i look at like what fruit is this producing okay. if i'm praying for a lady 
just and I'm praying come out and she's screaming and the demons coming out mm -hmm. and it is that and people watch it and go man that looks biblical you're using the name of Jesus there's no extra theatrics there's no extra editing to the video yeah. it's yeah. not all then that's bring that's health and then also like what is the fruit of her life did she really get delivered was there actual deliverance happening yep. but when you have guys I saw a video yesterday of a guy literally like doing the Harlem shake yeah. and the person like was had a demon and apparently him doing the Harlem shake <laughs> to the person got them like delivered I would look just call and be like that's whack that's not and so some of the theatrics I agree when you're talking about that I'm just talking about general deliverance I think it's massively needed obviously I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing yeah. and I think a lot of times when we look at people it's like man this has to be something where and and then you have to also remember I've done like I've been in thousands of deliverances so I'm also have this mind of seeing so many different people experience it yeah. you know what I mean I'm trying to tell you when you're yeah. like I've seen some of it but yeah. it's not like you haven't seen thousands yeah. of people delivered so I think yeah I think there could be a lot of theatrics cut out to help people that are leery about sure. like this is something Jesus did yeah. the good thing is though we can sit back and say okay this is scriptural Justin Martyr I think in his second apology a guy just I shared a video of but in Justin Martyr's second apology he wrote all about deliverance that was happening in the early church yeah. this idea that demons were not cast out in the early church is so far-fetched. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Catholic church who believes they're like the true church, yeah. they do deliverance because they believe it's the purest form of like yeah. the true church. Yeah. So for sure, deliverance went on through early church history. I think yeah. now the generation we live in, we massively need it, but I totally get there's people like, well, it feels very theatrical, it feels very sensational. And a lot of times it literally is yeah. because demons throw an attitude, they throw a fit, they want to show, yeah. they want to put on a show, they want to laugh, they want to speak out of people. So I think that, yeah, a lot of that could be a disservice yeah. to I, I think actual the, ministry. I, I don't know if, mm, I think most Christian denominations believe that Demons are real. Absolutely. I think most. Then it's like, why Christian, wouldn't we deal with them though? I think it. I think it comes That's down. I think it comes down to like how frequent they are. Yeah. How many people get them? What does that look like? And I think that's where the. The, the the detention and all of it is well people say like how are you guys casting so many demons out but you have to remember we're doing these mass deliverance events where we're like hey if you need freedom come to these events yeah so in our sunday morning service every single person's not getting delivered every week yeah. like we had three thousand people last week at yeah. five services yeah. and we said hey if you need prayer there's prayer but there wasn't a hundred people getting delivered every week yeah so i think if you look at Do these you, mass deliverance yeah. services you might think like everyone's getting delivered but it's yeah. like dude we're doing these events you know for and i think from my understanding you guys don't like like what appears on social media isn't necessarily what's happening on the ground regularly not every single day no yeah. for sure not. so i think that's also like it kind of skews the the perception of course, of, yep. it's the same way people look at my content yep. think i just do one thing but they don't really sit or they've never yeah. experienced a hour-long video you yeah. know they've never really sat and listened to me so i think i think i could see how people's perception would be that i think it's interesting in that i'm always just trying to get to the clarity of what are we disagreeing about yeah, yeah. right and so that's why i'm like hey man like I haven't experienced enough of it. I'm not. I'm not that immersed in that world. I think if people want prayer, give them prayer. Yeah. I I am against people getting deliverance over and over again. Of course. I think that's weird. It's I, unhealthy. I th I am against telling everybody everything is a demon. Yeah. Of I course. think that's dangerous. Which we have to always say everything is not a demon. We right, have to say this right. over and over again because it is dangerous when you constantly think you just need to get delivered again, delivered yeah, again, delivered yeah. again. Yeah. Because because and we talked about it last time is like the things that come off a. Uh, certain way online the audience is going to take and be more radical yes with it, you know yes. so if, like, as you could probably see yeah, from the chat tonight yeah like we talked earlier and you're like yeah I don't, like you and on my on my stream you're like yeah i don't think tattoos are a sin yeah you know and like i, was, I didn't know that like because yeah. because some of the audience is so turned up when they find out i have a yeah. tattoo and you're like yeah, I, don't, I actually don't think it's no a thing, yeah i think you know? for me like i said it's a sin for me because yeah. god specifically told me don't get tattoos right. but in general yeah. i'm not out here going like you're in sin if you're getting tattoos yes. you're opening doors yes. to yes. demons so it becomes hard to gauge like what is actually happening? What is the theology that's driving it? Yeah. And and versus and what is the persona of the tribe online perpetuating it? I would be super you know what interested what I mean? to get you in a deliverance with seeing it with like a couple of us guys leading someone and doing yeah. it and you just being there supporting yeah. just so you're just to see be like wow this is actually not because a lot of people that are in deliverance it becomes real when you see it like right the way we right. would do it right, right. i right. know you've seen deliverance stuff but the way we would do it yeah. just to be and maybe even someone you know or someone we all mutually know yeah. just because it opens your eyes to be like man this is actually so much more real than maybe i thought and not as theatrical or yeah. sensational as a lot of guys would think because online and i haven't posted a deliverance clip in like a year or two okay. but online it looks so much more 
more than it actually is because we're only posting highlights. Right, right. Like you're not out here posting clips that you don't think are good. You're only going to post the best most. Right, so right. a lot of times there will be a hundred people that get deliverance yeah. and maybe like five of them yeah. or even two and maybe one gets posted. So yeah, for sure. It makes this image yeah. of like every deliverance, someone sure. screaming and levitating sure. when in reality, there's a lot of normal deliverances where it's like the right. person's literally just like, oh, I felt something leave me. It's hard to form an opinion on something that is in short form clips. Yes. You know, like yes. it's hard for me to like yeah. have and a- things have get a, taken out of context and everything. Right, right, right. For right. sure. Yeah. So uh, 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 to summarize that, I would say I'm not opposed to it. Um, I am I, I'm skeptical in some of the radicalization of of the way the community seems online. Yeah. Right. Um, when uh here's a very real example. There's people in the chat that think I need deliverance. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm like, bro, like my my God's very present and dominant in every area of my life. Yeah. Like, and, and it hasn't always been that way. Yeah. So that's where I go, okay. Like, yeah. what, are, what are we talking about? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, like, I think that's where it just gets a little uh it, it, it just gets a little wonky because sometimes the audience doesn't reflect you. Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 what's taken by the tribe isn't my relationship with Mike Signorelli. Well, you know I'm I mean? sure if you're hearing a voice or you're having these de perverted thoughts or some one yeah. of the symptoms, you'd yeah. be like, hey, dude, will you pray deliverance over me? Like, yeah. would you would you do that? I would do that. I would, I would ask that's my, my church family that's for prayer. That's like, what I'm saying. You know, so that's I, I what I'm saying. So you have random people yeah. online being like, Ruslan, you need deliverance, or Isaiah, yeah. you need deliverance. And I'm like, bro, literally, if I do, I'm right here. Right, you right, know, like, right. I would get prayer. Right. I would call my friend. I just told my friend, like, hey, pray over me right. soon, because I just want to make sure nothing's there. Yeah. But I think people think that we have this arrogance that we don't need it. I'm like, you just said, I'll go for prayer if yeah. I need prayer. Yeah. But it is weird yeah. for random people online to be like, Ruslan, you need deliverance. Yeah. It's like, you don't even well, you, know me. But when you also describe it, you also you also say, like, intrusive perverted thoughts yeah when you were like in our conversation earlier yeah do like, you guys have to watch the three hour interview because we've been like filming for six yeah, seven hours yeah, yeah. today and we need to go get some food soon yeah but when you were like yo uh <laughs> if you're a dude and you're married and you're heterosexual and then all of a sudden like wild intrusive yeah. thoughts come out about a homosexual act yeah you know and i'm like yeah no i've yeah. never had that i say yeah and then, <laughs> like, and dude that's crazy yeah you and know? that's guys all the time yeah, that's, yeah all that's, the time that's dark so man. in that place it's like okay you need to get you need to get freedom or yeah. like even the same thing i had an nfl player hit me up recently and was like man i have this thought he's like i'm a christian i was raising nfl i wouldn't i've would never mentioned his name but he said i was raised in the church i'm a christian i started finding your videos on youtube because yeah. i was googling like how do i know if i have a demon because sure. he said i get this thought He's like, I have a beautiful wife, beautiful kids. I'm a Christian. I would never do this. He's yep. like, just, I want you to know before I tell you, he said, yeah. but I get this weird thought in my kitchen. I stand in a certain area and this voice literally says, grab a knife and kill your wife. He's like, can I get this overwhelming? He's like, I would never do it. That guy should go up for That's deliverance and get prayer. See, like, see, like I would never be yeah. like, don't, don't yeah. get prayer for That's that. what I'm saying though. A lot of people have this and who's this guy going to ever tell? He right. would never tell a normal pastor that doesn't right. do deliverance. Right. So he comes and goes, Hey, so we go on zoom. We yep. do deliverance. Yep. Hey, if there's, a, there was no like barfing, screaming, but he's like, man, I felt something leave me mm. cool praise the lord yeah. and if you need if you feel it come back we'll pray again now, let me ask you this do you think he could have if he was in a local church do you think he could have went to his local pastor no no him? his pastor doesn't do but if he but if his pastor was like oh yeah absolutely. let's pray for you yeah bro i tell pastors i wish every church would do this because yeah. we wouldn't have to like i don't do even you, do you think it there's a specific flow of words you have to say like like say that guy's in local church and they believe in the gifts but maybe uh, like do they have to say come out in jesus name like no is there, no no. i would say there's no like abracadabra no like, no no. there's okay. no formula but you do need to confront the demon you need to command it to leave you can't okay. just be like i just pray lord you bless him and help these thoughts leave the demons are just gonna laugh at you yeah. you have to actually what if somebody's praying and it's like it. god if there's any spirit anything to you know yeah. latching on i rebuke that and i cast it out like yeah, what if they don't happen. what if they don't say it with a certainty like yeah. i cast out the demon of lust, but yeah. they say if there's any like what for they sure, that caveat. for sure you can get deliverance from that. Of course, God can do anything, but I would say normatively, demons are extremely stubborn, and there's times where you need to put pressure on them, call them out of their house, and be mm -hmm. like, you need to come out and call them by name. I've had times where I've done deliverance and nothing would manifest, and the person's like, Well, I really I keep hearing this voice like saying a name. And yeah. I'm like, What is that name? It's some ancient yeah. name. Yeah. And I'll be like, I command the spirit of this, and then the demon surfaces and starts screaming out of them. Yeah. So it's like weird because it didn't come out before, but you have to be they're very judicial. You need yeah. to be very direct with them yeah. and use like legal term you can't just be like if there's anything there come out and that does some work sometimes but this is warfare paul said in ephesians 6 we're in a wrestling match yeah. so you don't go to a wrestling match and be like well i guess i'll just try no you're like 